Hi, I'm Alistair and this is part of a series of videos where I'm trying to document the process of creating a portable escape room inside this box. Now, um, at the end of the last video, I started to look at the kind of the main control unit, which is going to uh, control the overall game and also the game timer. So I got uh, three different displays. Uh, which I tested out to sort of display the, the time remaining for players and things like that. I still haven't quite worked out um, which one I'm going to use yet, but I've got the basic hardware and the software going to start and stop the clock. Uh, now what I want to do is to actually look at the design of what that control unit is going to physically look like inside the box and how it's going to be positioned. And to do that, I'm going to uh, lay out the, the components in Inkscape, which is a brilliant, brilliant 2D uh, vector graphics software. It's all open source and free as well. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to measure the dimensions of each of these components. Um, so this is something I never knew how much I needed until I got one. This is a pair of digital calipers. They're not very expensive, um, but they're just really convenient for accurately measuring. For example, that's 40.8 high and this is uh, 120 mils wide. So you can very quickly get accurate measurements of all these components, including the location of the screw holes and things. And I'm going to use that to create kind of uh, outlines of all the components in Inkscape, lay them out, and then print them out and possibly um, laser cut them as well. So I've got kind of a panel for that main controller to go in the box. Okay, so here's Inkscape and the first thing I'm going to do is draw um, an outline for the kind of the overall extent of the box. Um, so just create a rectangle and then at the top here I can literally just type in uh, values. It was uh, 67 and a half centimeters across and it was 286 millimeters high. Uh, okay and now you'll see what's happened because I've kind of given it a very thin outline when I'm going to laser cut these um, I don't really want them to have uh, a thickness to that line at all so I'm just going to go to fill and stroke uh, stroke style oh, actually yeah so it's got a tiny stroke style I just need to go and set that to outline so I can actually see it. Okay, there's my box. Um, and let us now go to document properties and I'm just going to resize the page to content. There we go. And so if I now zoom out a bit, that is the extent of my box. Okay, um, it actually has slightly rounded uh, corners on my box as well. So I'm just going to drag these corner handles in a bit like that. Um, there, so we're getting a nice rounded edge. Okay, so that's kind of like my canvas that I'm going to, to draw my uh, layouts on. Oh, and the uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some kind of um, reference sort of uh, images as well. So um, I'm going to draw an A4 size box that's 210 mils by um oh, what's a4 297 isn't it uh so that is an a4 square or rectangle uh, let's actually just write that in a font that i can see as well so i'm not going to print that at all i'm just going to keep that off to the side and i'm going to use that as a, a check uh, the reason why i put a4 there is because um the wood I buy, so like the plywood sheets, which I'm going to cut this out of, um, comes in A4 sizes. So if I make sure that every component I want to print is less than that, then I know I can definitely print it. And then let's do an A5 one as well. Uh, so that's still going to be uh, 210, but I need to half the width, don't I? So what's half of that? 148. Uh, there we go. So that's A5. So I can get two of those out of every piece of uh, wood I use and I'm thinking that should be big enough to kind of make this one two three four five six panels I guess so uh, what I'm going to do let's actually just try that out so if I um, take that down here and actually I want that the other way around probably don't I so let's make that uh, 210 by 148 
Yeah, so that's going to be plenty big enough to lay into sort of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. In fact, I can make them slightly smaller than that. So let's make this 100 and maybe 20 by 200. That should give me enough kind of room around the edge uh, to have a little bit of space. And I think I, maybe I'll make these rounded as well slightly. I just think that gives it a slightly nicer kind of aesthetic. I am not. Uh, really a design expert I'll be totally honest um, so I kind of you know I, I kind of guess what I think is going to look nice and try different things out uh, so let's just create uh, three of those in a row or nearly in a row uh, fortunately Inkscape has lots of nice things that will help me make it in a row so um, let's put those in the middle let us distribute them equally like that lovely and let's take a copy of that and another three and let's put them underneath, line them up, drag them down. So this is kind of the layout I'm roughly thinking of for my um, sort of this idea of these panels that drop in. So let's say this one here is going to be the one that's going to have our game timer in it and then the other ones are going to be these kind of things that you can pop in and out of the box somewhere. Um, I say not totally 100% sure on, on layout yet, but um, well, that's kind of what I'm thinking of. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to put in those kind of um, uh, kind of footprints of the different components I want to have. So first of all, uh, so I measured the, uh, the LCD screen and that was 78.8 millimeters across and it was 51 and a half millimeters high and then let's put a label on that as well so that we know what these different things are as we kind of drag them around the screen later so that's the LCD display um, let's group that uh, okay so it might be that my you know, it looks like I might have to make my kind of uh, central controller a bit bigger actually because I'm not going to fit all these things in otherwise um, and then the next one was the uh, the LED matrix. So that was 128.6 and the height was um, 32. Oops, and I've squashed the text because I grouped the text. So um, let's just put that in there. Put that in there for now. I can see it's definitely going to have to make this bigger. Uh, LED matrix. I think I put a spelling mistake in there somewhere because I couldn't really see what I was typing. Lovely. Let's do that. And then uh, I also have, uh, I've actually got a square arcade button that I'm going to put in here, I think, because I think that makes it a bit more interesting than a, a round one you see more often. So I'm going to go 26.8, 26.8. So that's going to be my button that, uh, for now at least, is going to be what starts and stops the um, the game, and that's we're going to make the countdown start and stop as well. And the last thing I had was my uh, four-digit LED display, uh, and that one was 120.4 by 41. Okay, uh, so. I mean, you know, you don't have to use. I've I've used Inkscape for a little while. I wouldn't say I'm an expert. I'm definitely not a graphic designer. But um, I really like the fact that you've got this combination of kind of being able to drag and drop things, but also to specify very exact uh, kind of values if you want to. Um, so I think that's kind of really helpful when you've got this combination of trying to be kind of artistically laying stuff out, but also um, typing in definite stuff you know. So that's my button. Oops, I mustn't drag it around. Having said that. Um, no goodness sake, having said that, I'm now making a mess of clicking all the wrong buttons on it. There we go, right. So, um, it's obvious that this is not all going to fit in that box at the moment. Um, so, this is where my kind of reference guides come in handy because I'm going to drag that down here and just sort of overlay that on that. Okay, so. I think I probably want to make it try to fit within uh, a 
portrait style. Yeah, I think okay. So let's um, let's move this in slightly. So the width of my A4 thing was 148. This is uh, 100. So let's try and make this. Uh, let's try and bring that in. And then if I fit in that and that, what if I group that? I didn't mean to group all that. I only meant to group the words and the pictures together. Let's make maybe maybe we'll make the central one a bit smaller. Um and zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Let's make it so that we've got the I think the LED matrix at the top. And I remember I don't necessarily plan to have all these displays in here anyway. This is kind of just a um, a test just to, to get all these things working. Well, you'll find I sort of, this might, uh, I tend to kind of iterate. I, I sort of get the hardware good enough that it works and then look at some design bits for a bit. And then I get the software to make the design works. And then I look at the um, hardware again for a bit. And I kind of iterate between them over and over until I, uh, whatever the weakest link is at any point in time I kind of concentrate on um, so at the moment I think the weakest link is the fact that I actually have uh, nowhere that nowhere physical that sort of looks right so I'm kind of getting this good enough is all I'm trying to do at the moment I'm not trying to get the final design at all um, so just to remind myself this one here was the um, seven second display um, and then I've lost my button I left it over here somewhere and let's put that roughly in the middle there okay so that's kind of the amount of room I will need for my um, central unit and if I now just drag my A5 over that I can just about I might just take that slightly, just a fraction thinner again. Uh, let's take that down to 145 maybe. Uh, no, 14. What was the width of this? Yeah, so. Uh, oh, what well, I've done there. <laughs> Wasn't paying attention. Let's take that one off. And this needs to be under 148 to fit in an A5 thing. There we go. So that one now fit in the A5. Um, and you know that's starting to look a little bit like how I imagined I guess so now what I'm going to do is group that and position that so it is in the middle of the page uh, sorry let's go to the page there we go um, and now let's position that and that uh, we'll get those to be like that Um, these and these and this are the same size so now what I want to do is to make this one match the size of that and then just to bring it down slightly uh, now do these ones at the bottom here fit inside an A4 page, an A5 page I mean yes they do, they're A5, they're A5, they're A5 that one and that one fit. So I think that will probably uh, do for now. I think uh, so what I'm going to do is now just uh, save that and we'll give that a try. So what I've now done is I've uh, saved that file from Inkscape and I've loaded it in a program called Laser Gerbil instead uh, which is another open source free bit of software. It's brilliant and it is for uh, sending graphics to a laser CNC or a milling machine like this. Um, so what I'm going to do first of all, I'm just going to um, move the head of the laser here so that it starts at the bottom left hand corner of the image. Um, which, like I say, if I did right, hopefully this is all going to fit on this A4 board which I've got here. Let's just go up a little more to the left and then if I just press this button here that should shine the laser on so I'm just going to line that up sort of pretty near the corner okay and then um, so if I set that my origin point then I'm just going to trace the whole outline of the shape and I'm hoping 
it is going to fit on this board. Um, so we're just going up about halfway, two thirds, perfect. Yeah, so we've got plenty of room at the top of the board there. When we come across, we should get less than halfway along. So that I've got room on this half to make uh, a second go. I mean, it's, yeah, it's quite close to the middle. I might just need to jog it slightly more left before I start off, just to make sure that I can definitely get um, two lots of width in, actually. Um, I'm not sure how much opportunity I gave myself on the left hand side there to fit two side by side, but we'll give it a go. Um, so if I just turn that on one more time and just jog that really as close to that left hand wall as I can, really. Maybe one more. Perfect. Right, okay. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do now, so I'm actually just going to turn on. Um, an air compressor which is going to help with the laser. So I haven't got one of these really powerful CO2 lasers that will just sort of melt wood or anything like that. So this is quite a low power laser, it's only uh, five and a half watts, but it will still cut through plywood just fine, it just needs a few uh, more passes. But I'm going to turn an air compressor on which will help it, but it's a bit noisy, so uh, I apologise for that in advance. Uh, here we go. And then I simply click go and uh, hopefully it will do its business. Let's see. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera a bit closer because I find watching the laser cutting pretty hypnotic. So um, if you'd like to watch that more close up, let's uh, do that for you there. give that a little bit of a wiggle these pieces will simply lift out there we go so that's the uh, button holder that means a bit longer and then so what I'm going to do actually I'm going to pick the whole board up and then this piece here will pop out and that one as well and then the outside edge here a little bit of help. Right, I've done one more pass on the outside one there. Oh, last one, a bit of a wiggle, and then... Oh, there we go, oh, ripped a little bit of that. That could have probably done one pass more, but that's okay. Um, so there we have our uh, frame to insert our components into. Okay, so I've got my uh, panel, which I've cut out, uh, and I've got my components, and then hopefully, if I've measured this correctly, uh, these will simply pop into the right section. So at the top here, we've got the um, 64 by eight pixel display. Not bad, not bad, okay. Um, and then underneath that, that was for the uh, SEM segment display, like that. Um, and then at the bottom, I've got that the right way around. I think I've got that the right way around. No, I haven't. It's a problem. Did we find out when I turn it on? Right, okay. I think uh, that goes in that way around. And then I've got uh, my button, which slots in from the top. 
and then I simply screw it on Oopsie. and hold it at the same time, might be better. And screw that around there. Now obviously if you don't have a um, laser cutter, um, remember I was I'm just was printing this out of an A4 piece of wood, so you could simply print out this template uh, onto paper instead from a regular printer lay it down on some wood and cut around the outside um, as well you know you don't you don't have to cut it out um, with a laser cutter you can just use it as a design aid really um why can't i slot that in oh, we've done that oh, there we go okay so that's my button um these are my things so what i now need to do is i need to screw them in from the back but before I do that, let's just test whether I've managed to break any of the electronics. So we will plug in the ESP again. I can actually get that right. Why is that not going in? Because I'm trying to do it with one hand. Oh, that was all right around the first time. Oh, good grief, I'm just going to put that down. There we go, and there we go, we've got our three displays, uh, all initially on five minutes, if I press the button, the countdown starts, press the button again, it stops, there we go, we have our basic uh, control unit, it's got, like I say, I'm not going to end up using all these displays uh, in the end anyway, but uh, I'll leave them there for now, there's uh, something a bit funky going on with the display here, so that's something I'm going to have to look at first. And I've also noticed at the top here that this uh, cable, although I've measured the dimensions of the panel, I forgot that the, um, the connector's on the side of that one. Uh, so I'm going to have to redo that again. But for now, that will do. And so we'll sort of carry on iterating through the hardware, the software, the design, and I sort of keep on making these little changes, making errors every time, and then we fix them and find the next one, things like that. Um, but that's where we're up to at the moment.